All rise. This is Deeper Than Money. Talk to me. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. If he is not going to honor you, he needs to be gone. Compassionate. I don't want you to give up on your dreams. I don't. And I want to figure out how we get this straight. She's powerful. If I were in this situation, I would have put you out too. And she's on the bench. I feel like I'm being judged here. <laughs> oh, that's what I do. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Whitney Keller is suing Seth Keller in the amount of $5,000. Ms. Keller claims her brother secretly sold valuable collectibles that belonged to both of them as children and says he should split the profits with her. You all are siblings. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you are in my courtroom fighting over some $5,000. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you know you all have a lot of explaining to do why the two of you all could not sit down and figure this out without coming to my court. What happened? Your Honor, so basically what happened was I was taking my daughter to the thrift store and she saw a bunch of little beanie babies. And I remembered that me and my brother used to play with them when we were younger. And we also decided to start collecting them together. Um, and I told her that I would reach out and see if I could go find our old ones for the sole purpose of if, you know, if I used to play with them, why not pass them down? I ended up texting him to reach out to him, which I do have the text messages right here to prove right, that I see. did reach out to him about it. And he told me that he sold them. No warning, no nothing, just straight up sold them. And I had to find out by bringing them up to him. All right, so how did you have the baby, Seth? Obviously, you had physical possession of them yeah. in order to be able to sell them. All right. And that's why I'm confused why I'm here. Because, I mean, they were mine. Backstory of me, I mean, recently, I just, you know, I fell on some hard times. And for myself personally, I lost my job. I was actually working on building my own real estate company and have my own firm and, and actually start trying to sell houses. And I put a lot of money into it. My girlfriend helped me invest into it. It didn't work out like we wanted it to, and she ended up leaving me. Um, oh, that's I've been out of my... So you had a double, double hit. Yeah. Your business did not go well, and your girlfriend left you. Yeah, and honestly, it's it's been rough, you know, recently. And I have been out of my mom's house. They didn't expect me to come back. Unfortunately, I did, and they were loving enough, and I'm blessed that I was able to come back. So, you know, her, she's she's married, like she said, she has a kid. She she's very busy. But, you know, let's go back. When I tried to reach out to her, before I reached out to my parents, I reached out to her and see if I could stay there. They have more than enough oh, room. Oh, that's what this is about. They have more than enough room for me to stay there. I told her that I could help take care of my niece. She's doing the salon thing, and I told her I could be there to help out because right now she can't afford daycare for these kids. So this is really, uh, wait a minute, this is really what this is about. You're mad at your sister because she did not say you could move in with her. So is it fair to say that the relationship between the two of you all is strained? Obviously, you're in here suing him. But aside from the money, it sounds like things are not going well with you all. Well, the reason why I told him that he couldn't stay with me is because I told him he needed to get a job first, or at least do something to show me that you're trying. You never even gave me a chance. But whatever. This isn't the first time, though. But this wait isn't a the first it's... time he's been in a situation where he got, somebody would help him and he'll get comfortable and then he'll rely on that. And like I said, I have my own family now and after having my own family, I had to grow up. I realized that sometimes you have to say no to people. Sometimes you have to make hard decisions because you can't sit there and watch the people that you love just fall, like just fall. I mean, honestly, I, I feel as that her, her wife influences a lot of her decisions and before she got married, you know, we used to be able to hang out a lot more. And I feel like before she got married and she wasn't married, she would allow me to move in with her. And things are very strained with you all. Cool. Yeah. So tell me about this $5,000. Why are you suing him specifically? Because he sold a pack that were not only his property. He sold it without calling me, without texting me, without even giving me a heads up saying, hey, sis. All right, so specifically then, Seth, what happened when we get to the box with the Beanie Babies? I saw them, and honestly, I was like, yeah, I remember these were worth some money now, I heard. So I, I looked it up. Sure enough, they were worth a lot of money. So, when you say a lot of money, how much was that? 
I mean, I saw some that was worth forty-five thousand dollars as max. You know, some as low as ten thousand dollars for just one. The ones that I have sold for, because right. I was just trying to get a little money to get back on my feet. But the two specifically, the two most expensive ones in this batch, were the ones that you say were your my gifts. Gifts. Yes. All right, and that was for a total of six thousand dollars. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And so he says that he sold them. Let's start with the $6,000. He says mm -hmm. he sold these two specific ones for a total of $6,000. Yes, sir. His sworn testimony in this court is that those were birthday gifts to him. Yes. Why should you share in that? Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. There's a lot of judgment going on on both sides of you all. But at the end of the day, this really is a problem. And later, it was really fun until I started to realize that she was basically using me as an ATM. If that is true, then you are allowing her to use you as an ATM, yes? If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Whitney Keller, who is suing her brother, Seth Keller, for $5,000. The ones that he sold, that's fine, but it's the fact that he went behind my back and knowing that those like weren't all his, didn't ask me nothing. And I feel like one of the main reasons why he's upset is because last year my parents had gave me a painting um, Tell me about this painting. It was just a painting that the painting they had now. in their house before they, and then they gave it to me when they downsized into their condo because I had just moved into a new house and okay. I wanted, um, you know, some decorations. And my f parents had gave it to me. It wasn't, I wasn't aware that they wanted to keep it in the family. I wasn't aware that they did, like, I couldn't sell it anything. It was just, I said, ooh, I really like that painting. Can I have it? Here you go, keep it. It was nothing else about, like other than that. No, it was One no, of my can I have it? They gave it to you as a Seth, gift. tell me, what was your understanding about this painting? They gave it to her as a gift. It was, it was given to her. It was no, oh, okay. can I have it? They gave you this painting. Because I liked it. And it was supposed to have been handed down. It was supposed to be handed they down to your daughter, too. They never told me that. So, so, wait a minute. How do you know that it was supposed to be handed down? Our parents Because told he found her. out after... Ap Seth, what were you about to say? Her parents told her. What after. did your parents say? So what happened was, if he would let me finish, um, I, one of my friends works at an art museum and they appraised it and they said that the painting was worth $14,000. Like I said, if I would have known that my parents didn't want me to sell that painting, I would have never touched it. But as soon as I sold it, I told my parents and I even offered them after they told me that they wanted me to keep it in the family, which I did not know because it was one big misunderstanding. I even told them I will give them some of the money for selling it because I feel bad. My parents have forgiven me, but for some reason, he still holds it over my head. And as you can see in the text message, the last thing he said to me was two words, the painting. So you agree that the $6,000 worth of babies are his. are his, okay. And you agree that because you said you were entitled to half of the $10,000, then how did you come up with five if you believe that $6,000 of the $10,000 because he also sold them at a very low rate, which I have right here, because I did, go. I looked them up to see how much everything was worth, and some of the ones that I had were worth more than $500. Oh my. Oh, they're all gone, I sold them. Every last one. Every last one, they all gone. Now, this $10,000, I'm gonna back out the $6,000, because we've agreed that those were his babies. Mm -hmm. I do think that these, that there were, Beanie Babies that belong to you and the Beanie Babies that belong collectively to you. So this $4,000 is unfortunate because you said I could have sold these for a lot more. Your Honor, can I, can I speak on something? I actually, because this whole thing started, is because she texts me. She has the text. I know. So what I'm trying to say is this. If you never text me about it, you would have never knew about it and we wouldn't be sitting here. And then on top of that, I tried to say, hey, can I buy her a new one? She didn't want it because it was cheap. So no. it kind of shows to you me you were really only the ones that were in that box because they're worth money because you what did research was, on it. I said, why would I want her to have a newer, cheaper one when she could have one that we used to play with or that at least that her mom used to play with? Because it's about money. Which no, you, it wasn't. So. It was about the fact that I wanted my kid to have something that I used to play with. I already felt like crap because I sold a painting that my parents wanted me to keep. 
But you don't know that, do you? Because you think you know everything. Just like how you assume that I'm busy all the time. Well, and so it's really not about the money? No. Then why are you in here suing? Because if that's the only way that I can get his attention, then I'm gonna do what I have to do for him to finally understand and for him to realize that he doesn't know everything. He assumes that he knows everything going on in my life. He assumes that, oh, she's so happy. Oh, she has money. Oh, she has this. When he doesn't know, he doesn't bother to ask, but he expects me to be there for him. I mean, there's a lot of judgment going on on both sides of you all. But at the end of the day, this really is a problem. Are you willing to even work on a relationship with your sister? Yeah, I, I just kind of, I just miss what we had. I mean, we, like I said, we used to hang out all the time, and she don't want nothing to do with me no more, I feel like, and... It's Seth, it's not that I don't want anything to do with you. I have a family, too. When you have your own family one day, you'll realize Well, maybe that you can do a better job of integrating your brother into some of the things that your family is doing. I try, but it's like, if every time I bring him over, He'll sit there and go, oh yeah, can you tell your girlfriend? Oh yeah, I mean your wife. He'll throw like slick, shady remarks at it. Seth, and it's let's like, do better. Sorry, Seth, do better. Why would I want Seth, that? Seth, you gotta do better. I'm, I'm sorry, sis. I'm sorry that I do that. I don't mean to. Yeah, you do. I, I don't. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I, I yeah, you do. Yes, you do. You're lying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're lying. Seems to be a problem with you. I'm coming down here and I am spending two seconds with you. You do mean to do it. You mean to take the jabs. You do mean to do it. And until you own it, it's not gonna get better. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. And you gotta do better. You gotta make an effort. You can't always say, oh, Judge, I'm busy, I'm, I'm tired, I'm working, I got a family. You know? I'm busy, I'm tired, I got a family. But you gotta make time for the people in your life, starting with your parents. Yes. You got it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, you uh, listen, $2,000 judgment in your favor, but I want you to understand this is much more important than, than the $2,000. Got it? All right. If nothing further, we'll stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $2,000. I love you. I but love we you need too. therapy. Yeah, I agree. No, we need therapy. I'm so serious. I know. Use your $2,000 and we'll go. Mm, no, use your 10. Parties are dismissed. Coming up. I have never borrowed anything like $500 at one time. Mm -hmm. but 200, you 200. Is, have you borrowed any money from her? You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. April Whitehead is suing Gracie Scott in the amount of $500. Ms. Whitehead claims her friend lied about losing her job so she could borrow money and says Ms. Scott conned her so she needs to pay her back. All right, April, you're suing Gracie. How do you all even know each other? Your Honor, I am suing Gracie. We are ex-friends. We were Ex-friends. That's right. And now you're suing her for some $500. Yeah. Tell me about the relationship before you all were on opposite sides of my courtroom. Well, we were college roommates for two years. Mm -hmm. um, we were good friends. We were always there for each other. I believed everything she told me. She has shown herself to be a deceptive person at this point, and I just can't see the friendship continuing, obviously, after what she's done here. So, Gracie, how would you describe the relationship? Unfortunately, I would agree. We were really good friends. We were roommates. We would go on hikes together, and it was really fun until I started to realize that she was basically using me as an ATM, and that's that not, not okay true. with me. Absolutely not. It's well, true. Well, if she's using you as an ATM, if that is true, then you are allowing her to use you as an ATM, yes? That is correct. And then so I started a journal. So every time I was spending money outside of my budget, I would write it down. I also have evidence for you here that I actually have been lending her more money and not getting it back. So even though she's asking me for $500, she actually owes me $850, so That's I should really true. be suing That's her for accurate. 350 That is not correct. Coming up. I don't care how close, if it's your sister, your brother, your roommate, your best friend, you gotta get some stuff in writing so that there's not this problem that we're having in court today.
You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of April Whitehead, who is suing Gracie Scott for fraud. So how is it that you loaned her the $500? What were the circumstances? Um, we were out at happy hour. She cried to me about how she needed money for a suit so she That's could apply for jobs. She said she had lost her job. And being a good friend, I wanted to help her out. I had recently gotten a really good tax refund, and she knew that. And I peeled off $500 in cash and just handed it to her so that Did she could get a new job. Did you have anything in writing? I, no, I mean, we have text messages. You say, Gracie, let me turn yes. to you. You say that you have lent her money or just given her money over the years? I have lent her money. I have text messages of her saying that she will pay me back, which is obviously not true because she still hasn't paid me back yet. And I also kept it in writing as a journal of all the added up events. I have never borrowed anything like $500 at one time. Mm -hmm. A uh, 200, the 200. Is, have you borrowed any money from her? L little amounts, but it was never in not a situation little, yeah. where I came to her and said, I'm going to pay you back and this is for this and I'm lying about what's happening. Like, I've come to find out that she did not lose her job, did not need a new suit. She was just trying to get money back from oh, me. Oh, stop. So, Gracie, uh, did you say that you lost your job? No, ma'am. I said I am wanting to buy a new suit for job interviews, but that never implied I lost my job. There's nothing in writing. I have said so many times in this courtroom, I don't care how close, if it's your sister, your brother, your roommate, your best friend, you gotta get some stuff in writing so that there's not this problem that we're having in court today. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. You're now suing for the $500, and you're like, well, wait a minute, you know, she owes me all this money. And so I'm going to consider it a wash. You're not going to get your $850 that you're claiming in this journal, and you're not going to get the $500. It's too bad that you've lost this friendship over this, but this is a situation where people loan money casually, they don't document it, and then they come to court expecting me to sort it out. And so, under these circumstances, I am going to deny your claim. You should have filed a counterclaim, which you didn't do. But if you had, I would consider it a wash at this point because you all were having money back and forth. And before you lie again and talk about losing a job and you need a suit or whatever, even if you didn't say you lost your job, the implications that you needed a suit to interview, it's reasonable that she would have thought that you needed a new job but that doesn't matter. What the point is that you were trying to get money back that you had given her over the years and you need to just deal with it directly. None of this around the barn, lying over the hill. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And so for the reasons I've stated, the case is dismissed and we'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. It's just a waste of time. I just time. have no interest in knowing her anymore. It doesn't. It's even. I said we were even before, and we're still even, so. Gather your belongings. It's extra to the rear to court. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.